Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins. For today, I'm going to be your developer advocate, and what we are going to be doing is checking out this right here. This is Kavita. This right here is a beautiful open source cross-platform ebook comic reader that you can install either locally or on your very own Linode with an Akamai connected cloud. This tool provides a wonderful way to manage all your ebooks. It supports multiple platforms such as PDF, EPUBs, whatever you need. And just the whole user interface is beautiful. For example, this book right here is Walkable City. I've been reading it. Zoom out a little here. You could see my format is EPUB. I last read it eight days ago. Length, a whole bunch of information. Up here, I can download it. I have settings here, such as analyzing refresh covers. I could favorite it, edit it, or continue. If I do click on continue, this is one thing I really like about it. This is the actual reading segment. If I open this up, we have a bunch of different things we could customize. I can make the font a little bit bigger, mess with the line spacing just a bit, make the margins a little bit tighter. And this is really helpful, for example, if you're trying to read your books on a smartphone or something like that. And of course, we have other settings such as right to left, writing style, tags, immersive mode. You could turn that on if you'd like to. Full screen layout. We could do a two column layout if we would like to. And of course, we have color theme options if you prefer lighter or darker. And of course I could go ahead and exit out of here and it's really as simple as that. If I go back to home, you could see my newly added or I can go to all series and see everything that I have accessible within my e-library. Now you can see right here that this is on a local instance. This is on my local home lab. What I'm gonna show you real quick is how easy it is to set this up on Linode. So if you don't have the infrastructure to have your very own home lab and all this stuff running locally, it's really easy to spin up on Akamai Connected Cloud here. And better yet, services like this are so lightweight, you can get the Nanode 5 gig plan and install this and a bunch of other services if you would like to using Docker. This right here is their main website. We get a summary. You can check out a demo if you'd like to see what it looks like right now and actually interact with it. This goes over some of the features, including search, metadata reviews, and ratings library management, and a whole lot more. If I go over to download here, we have multiple options. You could download it on Windows and run it locally if you want to try it out. Linux, we have Mac OS, Docker, which is this is what we are going to be using. And then there are options for others. Now this video is more of a basic video. I'm not going to run through all setting up reverse proxies and things like that. Granted, that's really easy to do with uh, Let's Encrypt and X on Docker. There'll be a link down below if you want to learn a little bit more about that. But for now, we're just gonna create a basic service and connect to it with an IP address. So I go to Linode, create. I'm gonna go down to the Docker instance. This is gonna save us a lot of steps with uh, prerequisites and things like that. I have some stuff that auto-filled for me. I'm gonna change this. So give yourself a limited pseudo user and a pretty decent password. You have your Linode API token stuff. If you do want to set up a domain name, this is a really good step. It'll set up your A records for you. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and skip that. For images, I'm going to go with the latest Ubuntu LTS, and I'm going to pick a region that is moderately close to me. And like I said, the Nanode one gig plan is going to be completely fine. And you can spin up multiple services using this one plan. And as you grow and whatnot, it's really easy to upgrade. So from there, it is a good idea to set up SSH keys and all that, but for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and skip all that and just click on Create Linode. Oh, and of course, do not forget to give yourself a really strong, complicated, and secure root password. Now let's go ahead and create our Linode. There we go, it's provisioning, and as soon as it says booting, just like that, we can now launch our Lish console to kind of monitor and see when it's gonna get everything installed for us. Right now it is setting everything up, setting up firewall, installing Docker. That's one of the really nice things about using those one-click installers. So now all we need to do is uh, wait. Once we get a login prompt, that's when we know we are ready to go. And there we go. So now let's just log into that real quick. We're gonna grab our IP address, head over to our local terminal and type in SSH, your limited pseudo user you created in the uh, kind of little setup page there paste in your IP address, and then we are gonna confirm, yes, this is our server. Type in our password. Just like that, we're in. Always run a good old sudo apt update and a sudo apt upgrade. We're gonna do Y, type in our password. And now while it does that, we're gonna head back to this page. Might look a little familiar. All we need to do is grab this docker run command here. I'm gonna give that a 
copy. Taking a look at it real quick, we have some volumes. This is going to be your Magna directory. You don't have to call it that. I'm going to edit this. And then we have your data directory. And start and list stop looks good. Running it detached as the latest one. This is going to be on the port 5000. So sweet. There were no updates that it needed to perform. So what we're going to do is create those directories. Now you can create them basically wherever you'd like. Just for simplicity, I'm going to make it in my kind of a home directory. So I'm going to do make dir. I'm going to make a Docker folder. I'm going to CD into that Docker folder. And then within that, I'm going to make dir. I'm going to call this cavita. Hit enter. And now let's CD in there. And within this folder, we are going to make two more directories. I'm going to call one config. And then I'm going to make another one and call it books. Just like that. And now if I do pwd print working directory, that's the directory we're currently in. So now if I run sudo and I paste in the docker command we copied earlier, we can make some quick little edits here. So this one is the data directory or the config directory. So I'm actually going to give this right here a copy. Going to back out of here like this, paste that on in. And this is going to be in the config folder. And then I'm going to leave this as is. And now let's go back over here and do the same thing, but I'm going to paste that. I'm going to rename this to books, and then I'm going to add the proper books right here. So now we're running it on the port 5000. It's going to have a books directory, which will point here, and it will have a config directory, which will point here. So now we should be able to run this. So let's hit enter, and it's unable to find, so it's going to go ahead and pull all of our images for us. And there we go. So now if I uh, let's CD into that config folder and then do an LS. So we should have a bunch of data. We see our uh, Kavita databases, bookmarks, cache covers, bunch of different things are in there. Now there's not going to be anything in our uh, data or our um, books directory as of yet. We'll show you all show you a way to add things uh, very soon. But of course we want to see if this even worked. So let's go back over here, grab this IP address. And this was on the port 5000. So let's hit enter. And then what do you know? It has worked. Now, like I said, it's not secure. You have ports and IP addresses here. Nginx, reverse proxy, pretty easy process. But we're going to register. I'm going to register as Brandon. Put in our email address. Put in a moderately decent password. Click register. So now we can log in here. Click submit. And there we go. You can see we have no library set up yet. We can configure some. We don't have any books in there, so we're not going to do that quite yet. But over here, we have some stuff that we could check out. We have settings. Let's go settings here. We don't really look at this too much in our initial little kind of overview, but here you can change your layout mode, your locale. Let's switch that to English. We have blur. We have image and book readers. There are third party client options here. So you have API keys and stuff. So you can connect it to other services that are able to communicate with this one. We could change our themes here and you can see they have a theme GitHub. So if I click on that, we can see some of the uh, options they have here. There's not much at the moment, but it's just a CSS file. So you could create your own if you would like to. They have your devices and status right here. There's not a lot going on because we uh, just installed this. Now there are a ton of different websites and projects. If you just Google open source eBooks, you can find various websites where you can get free ebooks. Now a lot of these are either really old or the authors open sourced them. So you could just go ahead, pull, download these and put them in your server. And of course, depending on what platforms you use, you can buy uh, ePubs and put them into your own server if you'd like to as well. For example, this right here, let's go to frequently downloaded. We have things like Moby Dick, Romeo and Juliet, some really popular older material. For example, if I wanted to go and get uh, Moby Dick here, you can see there's a bunch of different options. We have HTML, we have EPUB, Kindle, bunch of different things. But what we are going to be interested in is a EPUB. Always be cautious and careful when downloading things off the internet. That's probably a good piece of advice. So I'm just going to download this EPUB right here. Boom. I'm going to grab this title here, go to that EPUB and give it a quick rename so I can better know what it is. Now there is a lot of different ways to send and manipulate files on your server. You could use SSH in the terminal, but one of my favorite applications of all time is this right here. This is FileZilla. To connect to it, we're just gonna go to our host here, type in SFTP. 
go over here, grab our IP address, drop that in. There we go. Now our limited pseudo user stuff. So my name, password, save the password. We're going to trust this. It's our server it asks us the same thing as if we're connecting in the terminal. There we go. So now we can see our stuff right here. We have that Docker folder we created. We're going to jump in here, go to books. And now over here, I have that book in my documents folder. So I can, I just give it a drag and a drop, put that in there. So with that, we can go back here and create a new dashboard. So we can go into our server settings. I'm going to full screen this real quick. Let's add a library. We're going to call this library books. We're going to change the type to book. If we go next. It's going to allow us to pick our folder, which this is going to be the right here books. There it is. So share that folder. So let's go next. We have our cover. So you can add a cover for that library if you would like to. I'm going to skip that for now. We have some advanced settings. So I'm going to go save. There we go. Now it's reading them. Okay. It's been like 10 minutes or so. I dropped that in there. It wasn't finding it. And then I remembered that the, uh, the scanner perform or prefers a specific layout with how things are organized. So I went and dropped in my actual existing ebook library and it found everything just fine. It's still scanning and uh, reading everything. If you click activity right here, you can see what it is doing live. Nothing else is going on. So if I go home, we can see a lot of the stuff that um, is in my library is now showing up because I got the uh, layouts for a lot of this stuff proper now. So here we have that walkable city. If I opened it up, we have all that information and it pulled in the uh, cover art and all that right away. If I click read, it's going to be the same type of situation. It opens up this from the get go because it wants me to kind of see what's going on. So that that's it. That's how you set up a, your very own ebook reader on Akamai Connected Cloud using the Linode marketplace of applications. Really fun. And like I said, a couple different times, just one service like this takes up almost no resources. So you can set up a bunch of different Docker containers on even the cheapest plan and you're good to go. And even better, use the link down below for a hundred dollars, 60 day credit to get started today for new users. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.